In this tutorial, you're going to learn how to create a CRUD app that interacts directly with the database. As an example, I created for myself a project suggestion app because I wanted to receive suggestions from my viewers on what other tutorials I should make in the future. So in this app, we're going to be able to create a suggestion. We're going to be able to read all the suggestions from the database. We'll be able to update the suggestion by toggle it completed and uncompleted. And we'll be able to delete the suggestion. And all of this is coming from the database. As you can see, if we refresh, we have all the data back again. For this application, I used Vite with React. I used Tailwind CSS to style it. And for the backend for our database, we're going to use AppWrite because it's very easy to set it up. And in this tutorial, you're going to see how to build this from scratch. Keep in mind that for this application, we don't have authentication for now. So basically everyone will be able to create new suggestions, edit them and delete them. This is not ideal for a production application, but we're going to start with this tutorial by building the app in a simple version. And then if you want, I'll show you in a future tutorial how to add authentication and how can we protect the data based on who created it. For example, we can make it so that only the users who created the suggestion can delete them, but only an admin can toggle the suggestion from uncompleted to completed. And also an admin can delete all suggestions. So if you want to see that, let me know in the comments below. But for now, let's build the first version of the application. Okay, so we're going to start in VS Code and all we have is a folder called suggestions. First step is to install React with V. For that, we're going to type npm create v at latest. Hit enter. For the project name, I'm going to put a dot because we already have the folder name. So we want it to take that name. We're going to select React. We just want JavaScript for now. And that's it. We now have a React project. Let's first install everything we need and then run it with npm run dev. Now you can press command click or control click if you're on Windows. And this will open the application. This is the basic boilerplate they have for V plus React. As you can see, we can click here and the count will increase. So this means that our application is working. Perfect. Now, the next thing is to add Tailwind. For that, we're going to go on their website, click Get Started. Here, we're going to select the framework guides and click on Vit. And basically, here they're going to tell us exactly what to do. So first, we're going to install everything we need like that. Next, we're going to initialize Tailwind. Next, we're going to go into the Tailwind config file and change the content to this. And last but not least, we need to add Tailwind directives in the index.css file. So let's find it here. Let's remove everything and just put in the Tailwind code. Close this. Now let's run npm run dev again. Now let's see what happens. Look at that. The site broke which means we did a good job. We have now Tailwind working on our website. Let's go back to the code and remove what we don't need. We don't need the app CSS file. We don't need assets folder. And then in app JSX, let's see. Let's just remove everything. And here we can put an H1 saying hello world. And just so that we can see Tailwind is working, we can use the classes text for Excel font bold. Remove this line, remove all the imports. And let's see what happens. Look at that. Perfect. We have the hello world and it's bold and big text. This means that we have tailwind and everything is working exactly as we want. Awesome. Now, before we write any code, we're going to go to app, write, And we're going to create the project in which we'll have our database. If you don't have an account, click get started and you can create one with GitHub as I did and then go to the console and here click on create the project. You can name the project whatever you want. I'm going to name it suggestions. Click next. We're created in Frankfurt. That's okay. Awesome. Now that we have the project, we're going to add a platform. And for our case is going to be web. Let's name the application something like suggestions app or my suggestions app. And for the host name, this is very important. Since we are on our local host, we want to say localhost here. 
because this is the way that AppWrite keep tracks of whether to allow a request to go through or not. So since we are testing right now and we're building the project, we are on local, insert here localhost. But when you are in production, you will want to change this from localhost to your production domain name. For example, let's say for the iCode this platform, I would say star.icodis.com. And this means that all the requests that come from the iCodis website, they will go through. Yeah, so just keep this in mind because otherwise you might hit some course issues and you won't know why. And usually this is why. All right, click next. And now we need to install AppWrite and import everything we need so that we can access the database. So basically we're going to use their SDK. So in our terminal, let's install AppWrite. And then I'm going to add all the AppWrite related code in a folder called lib. Here we have a folder lib from library. And inside we're going to have AppWrite.js just so that we have everything related to the database in one place so we know where to find it. And here we're going to need a couple of things. First, we need to import the client from AppWrite. And we're going to need to create a client by saying new client. And for this client, well, you know what? Let's look at their instructions. So as you can see, we imported a client and then we need basically this code. We create a new client and then we set the endpoint and we set the project. This is the ID of our project. So we need that to let AppRite know that this is the project we want to interact with. So let's paste this code in. We don't need that, all right? So again, this is the project ID. With AppWrite, you're going to notice that we're going to need some IDs to interact with the project, with the database, with the collections. This is how they manage interactions with the database. So just keep that in mind. All right, perfect. Let's see next. And then we go to the dashboard. Awesome. This is the AppWrite dashboard. You can see the authentication, databases, functions, messaging, storage, and all the fun stuff. But for now, all we want is the databases. We want to create a database. Let's call it, well, uh, suggestions, because I have no other idea of what we can call it. So yeah, maybe you're more clever than me and have other ways to name your things. But yeah. anyway, so we created our database and the database is going to have collections and the collections is going to have documents. And that's what we need. The document is basically the data that you want, and it stays inside of a collection, which stays inside of a database, which is part of a project. Yeah, so it seems like a lot, but with time, you'll start to connect things. Let's create a collection, and for this one, let's say items, just simple items. Again, this is if it's easier for you to comprehend. A collection is like a table, and then a document is like a row in that table, if it makes better sense for you. So now, for our collection, we're going to need to have attributes. So each document is going to have a set of attributes. Let's go to the attributes and create them. So let's think, what do we want? Well, we want to create a suggestion app and each suggestion is going to have a text, right? So what was the suggestion made by the user? And it's going to have some kind of a Boolean that will tell us, is it completed or is it not completed? So for the first attribute, we're going to create a string called text. We can set the size of it. I think 1000 characters, it's enough. And we definitely want it to be required. Otherwise, why would you have this document, right? So we create this attribute and let's create another one. This type of Boolean that's going to say completed. And for this one, we want the default to be false, right? So whenever the suggestion comes in, by default, it's not going to be completed. And we can leave the required off because we already have a default value. So we know it's going to have something in it. Let's create it. And with that, we have the attributes that our document's going to use. So for fun, let's go back to documents and let's create our first document. This suggestion comes from the tutorial and by default, it's going to be false. And let's create it. So we officially have the first document. Now let's go back to our application and find a way to, well, list all the documents we have in our database. And for that, we still need to do a few things here in the AppWrite.js file. First, we're going to need to set the database ID and the collection ID. If you remember at the beginning, I told you that with AppWrite, we need the IDs of what we want to use in our application. So how do we get those? Well, it's easy. If we go back to the databases, 
this is the ID of this database. We can copy it and paste it here as a string. And for the collection, just click and you'll get to the collections and you can copy the ID of the collection of items. And then we have that here. Now from the app right, we also want to get the databases. At the end of the file, we want to export a few things. We're going to use this in our application to interact with the database. So we're going to export databases, which is going to be a new database that's going to use the client we created above. And also let's export the database ID and a collection ID, which we're going to use to list all the documents from this database and this collection. Now back in our app.js, this is where the fun begins. So let's see, how can we list the document? Well, first let's import the database ID, the collection ID and the databases from our library. Perfect. And in our app, we're going to create an async function, get suggestions, which as you guessed it, is going to help us get the suggestions from the database. So now we can use our databases, which has a method of list documents. And this method requires the database ID and the collection ID. This is why I passed it down here. So we have it. This is going to return a promise. So we're going to store it in a res variable. We're going to await. And then here, let's just start by console.log.res. Let's see what happens. And we can call this function, get suggestions. Let's see, back in our application, open a console. All right, we need to start a project, npm run dev, okay. Let's refresh, hmm, look at that. So definitely something is happening because we have an error and that's good. We just have to fix it now. What does it say? So the error says that the current user is not authorized to perform the requested action. Hmm, that's interesting. Well, the reason for this is that we haven't said who has access to the documents. So on the collection level, we can go to the settings and here on the permissions, we can set a role of who can do what. And let me show you what I mean by that. We can have all guests, all users, anyone, selected users, and many other things here. But for now, because this is a demo project, we're going to say that anyone can create, read, update, and delete. So basically, anyone who accesses our website, our application, will be able to perform all the four operations, which again, keep in mind, this is a demo project. You wouldn't do something like this in production. In production, you'll have another role something like maybe only selected users can delete stuff, or maybe you have a label for an admin. But yeah, I'll show you in a future tutorial if you want me to. Just let me know in the comments. For now, we'll allow anyone to create, read, update, and delete. Perfect. Let's go back to our application and refresh. And look at that. We have something from the database. We have a document. And here, if we see, look at that. The text is our suggestion and we have the completed flag, which is perfect. We also get other things back from the database, like the ID of the document, the permissions, when it was created and stuff like that. It's good to keep in mind in the future. But for now, let's show the text and the completed flag in our UI. And of course, let's style it a bit because it's ugly. So yeah, go back to our application. What we want to do here is Whenever we get the suggestions from the database, we want to store them in the state so that we can loop over it and list it in the UI. For that, we're going to use use state to create the suggestions. Have suggestions, set suggestion is going to be used state, and by default is going to be an empty array. And here, instead of saying console log, we can set the suggestions with whatever we have from the response. Response dot documents. And those will be our suggestions, right? So we see we have here an object. It will say the number of documents returned and the documents, which is an array. And that's what we want. Perfect. And let's recreate this here. We'll use a UL that's going to loop over the suggestions. And for each suggestion, we're going to create an ally. For the key of this, because in React, we need to use a key. We'll set suggestion dot dollar sign ID because we have that from the database. And here for now, let's just say suggestion dot text. Let's just see it on the screen. And of course we need to use this function. So we'll put that in a use effect. 
is effect. And here we're going to call the get suggestions just like that. Yeah, let's see. Look at that. We have the suggestion that comes from the database. Now, if we go back to our database and to our documents and create another document, this is not sample. Let's create it with null to see what it happens. As you can see, by default, it goes to false, which is good. That's what we want. And here, if we refresh, we have the other suggestion as well. Now, one thing I don't like is the styling of this. So let's quickly fix that. Here in the return, we're going to have a main element, which will wrap everything. And this main element is going to have class name, max with 3XL, with full MX auto, so that we center it. And also in the index, we're going to apply a background color, text white and padding on our body, just so that it looks a bit better. Perfect. For our UL, we're going to have space Y4. So we have some spacing between the suggestions. And each suggestion is going to have a class name, flex, item center, border, border color, white with opacity, padding for, we want it rounded, some bit of a shadow, and a gap of two like that perfect the reason why i made this flex is because we're going to have other things going on inside of the ally for example a check mark if this is completed or not and we can put that in a spend tag and we can say suggestion that completed is it completed if it is i want to put a check mark otherwise just don't show me anything so let's put a check mark here like that and we won't see it yet because we don't have any suggestion completed. So let's change this to be completed. Data from false to true, update it, refresh, and then look at that. We have the check mark if it's completed and we'll have an input and a button as well here. For now, let's take a step back and think, all right, so we have the read from the CRUD, right? We have the read part. We list all the documents. Now let's see how we can create a new document. And for that, we're going to need a form. Here above the list, we're going to create a form element. And this form element is going to have a text area, which we're going to use to write the suggestion. And it's also going to have a button, which we're going to press to submit the suggestion. I'm not going to bore you with the classes, so let me paste in the classes that I have, just so that it looks a little bit better. It looks like this. Of course, we need a text for the button. This will be sent. So we have our text area where we can enter stuff and the button send where we can, well, obviously send the data that we have in a text area. But of course, we have to link everything. First, let's link the text area value with another piece of state. So this value is going to be the suggestion text. Basically, whatever we enter here is going to be another piece of state. So we'll have the suggestion text set suggestion text and by default your state is going to be an empty string and we're going to have an on input event that will fire a handle input function which we're going to create next here handle input function this is going to take an event and we're going to set the suggestion text to be e.target.value so basically whenever we're going to enter something in the text area this input event will fire and then we're going to store whatever we have in the text area, we're going to store on our state. Why? Because we're going to use this state later to store it in the database. And by later, I mean now. So on our form, we're going to have another event on submit. And this will fire another function, add suggestion, which we're going to create right now. Function, add suggestion by default, because we have a button inside of the form, which is type submit. I definitely did not forget to write that. So whenever we have that in our form and we click the button, the form will refresh the page and we don't want that. So here we're going to say e.prevent default. So we want to not submit the form whenever we press the button, but instead we want to check if there's a suggestion text. So remember the suggestion text comes from our text area. And if we have a suggestion text, we want to a new document in our database and for that we're going to use again our databases and we're going to create a document this is a function that comes from the sdk they have on AppWrite. and again this needs a database id a collection id another id that we're going to create soon and we're going to pass in whatever data we want for this document to have in our case 
we want the text to be the suggestion text we have from the state. And because this returns a promise, let's wait for it to finish. We need to convert this to a sync function as well. And at the end, whenever we finished creating the document, we want to do two things. First, we want to clear up the text area. So we set the suggestion text to an empty string. And second, we want to fetch again all the suggestions so that we get the new suggestion that we added to the database. So we want to call the get suggestion function, which will, well, get the suggestions again. All right. So we don't have the ID. This is an ID we'll have to pass in whenever we create a document and it has to be unique. So how do we make sure that it's unique? Well, AppWrite has something for that. It's called ID and we can pass it down here like that. And then in our application, we can get it. And this has a function called unique. So basically we'll get a unique ID that we can pass in to this new document. Let's see if this is working, by the way. The text area looks a bit empty without the placeholder. So maybe we should add that placeholder. Enter your suggestion here. Let's see. All right, look at that. Oh, pretty. Yeah. So new suggestion. Is it working? We're going to press send. Look at that. The text area is cleared and we have a new suggestion, which is coming from our database. Hopefully, let's check. In our items collection. Yeah, look at that. We have a new suggestion with a completed or false. How awesome is that? So now we also have the create part of the CRUD. Perfect. I don't really like the fact that the suggestions go to the end of the list. So let's fix that. We can go up here whenever we set the suggestions. So remember, this is an array of documents and we can hack it a bit. We can just say reverse. So whatever they give us from the database, we just reverse it. So now we have new, new suggestion. If we send it, it will go up there. This is a UI hack. Maybe not the best, but it definitely works in this case. All right, so we have the create and we have the read. Now let's see how we can update and delete a document. For that, we're going to need to go back to our list items here. And for the update, we're going to add an input of type checkbox like that. And the value of the checkbox is going to be based on what we have from the suggestion. So remember, in the suggestions, we have the completed flag. So we can use that suggestion.completed. Let's save and see. Look at that. This one is completed. This is not, well, just this one is completed. So yeah, I don't like the fact that they kind of touch here. So let's use a bit of a CSS and we can say margin left auto. That way they go right there at the end because we have the flex container. Perfect. So that works, but uh, well, Actually, it doesn't because we're not linking the input to the database. So let's do that. Whenever we press this input, we want to fire another event. So on change, we want to create a new function called update document. And this function is going to need to get something. We want to tell this function which document we want to update and what value we want to update it to. So for the which part, we can pass in the ID that comes from suggestion.id like that. And uh, what part we can pass in the opposite of the completed flag. So we want the not suggestion completed. So if we have a suggestion that is completed, we want it to be uncompleted. So that's what we pass in in the function. And now we have to create this function. Let's go here. It's going to be another async function. Update document is going to take an ID and a completed value. And as you probably have guessed it, we're going to use the databases again. And for this, they have another function called update document, which needs the database ID, the collection ID, the ID of the document we want to update, and also a payload of what we want to change. So we want to change the completed flag to the completed value we get from the function here. And because we're changing the database and we're updating the documents, let's also get the new suggestions from the database. So our app is in sync with the database. Let's see. When we check this, look at that. It marked it as completed. If we check it again, it will mark it as not completed, which is exactly what we want. And with this, we have the update part of the CRUD. The last part is to delete document. Let's go back to the app. We go down here in our list item. And after the input, we're going to create a button, not a nothing, but a button like that. Inside of this button, I'm going to paste in an SVG because SVGs are cool. Don't worry about it. 
you can find the code, you can copy it as well. We're going to have a class name for the button just to change the text, which will change the color of the SVG. And then whenever we click this button, we want to do what we said. We want to delete the document. So we're going to create another function, delete document. And this is going to need the ID of the document we want to delete. Gestion.id, just like that. Let's create the function underneath the update, sync function, delete document. We're going to pass in the ID. And here, of course, we're going to use again the databases and they have a delete document function that needs the database ID, the collection ID, and the ID of the document we want to delete. And at the end, we want to get the suggestions again so that the UI reflects the data. And with that, we also have the delete functionality. Let's delete this one. As you can see, it's gone. And this one, and this one, and this one. And with that, you created a full CRUD application that works directly with the data from the database. Congratulations. If you like this video, give it a like. Let me know in the comments what you want to see me do next. And until next time, happy coding.